Hey, what's up everyone? Daniel Kaiser here at E3 2013 talking all things Destiny with writer and design director Joe Staten. Joe, thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations on the big reveal, man. Thank you, it's awesome. It's good to take the take the wrapper off and show everybody what we've been working on. And the way you did it was really special. You did it at the Sony press conference. Uh, you know, for you guys, that must have been very unique and interesting circumstance. Talk about what it was like to present it for the first time. Sure, absolutely. I mean, it's a big game. It's hard to really package everything that's cool about it into 10 minute experience, but being up on the Sony stage, getting seven players, showing off the social parts of the game and all the cool private loot stream stuff, that was a lot of fun. I mean, the Sony press conference was was awesome, and it was a great a great experience. Yeah, and you talked about like what is cool about this game, and I think you guys have really tried to think about what is the evolution of the first-person yep. shooter genre. Talk about some of the goals going into Destiny. It's a huge project for you guys. Sure, absolutely. I mean, we have a lot of experience making fun sandbox shooters, so at the core, that's what this game is. It's a great bungee action shooter game. But we wanted to draw in things that would make it special, a different kind of experience. One of those big things is just how social it can be. I mean, if you don't want to be social, if you want to spend time by yourself in the game, you can do that too. But if you want to have those social collisions like we showed in the public event, the world is always going to tempt you with fun things like that. Ways to spend time with other players for a little bit of time, then break apart and do your own do your own thing again. Yeah. Um, also, the other thing that's cool, we showed off a little bit, was just the loot. I mean, lots of games have loot, but it's a whole different world when your shooter starts giving you stuff that's customized for your character, that's appropriate for your level, that makes you more powerful, that makes you look different. It's just a lot of it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and that was uh, fun is a great word because you know this is a huge project that you, is you know coming off of Halo for you guys. Yeah. But also the game just looked fun at the presentation, yeah. and you had a big emphasis on that with the loot. So talk about what you're trying to convey that you know that um, personal experience, so that social experience is something that you guys are really focused on, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of our core ideas or beliefs is that something that's fun to do is more fun to do with other people. That applies to lots of things yeah. in life, but games but games too. I mean, not all the time. I mean, again, sometimes you want to be by yourself, and that's fine. You can do that in Destiny, but we really think that the experience of playing in the game, adventuring through these worlds, exploring this wide frontier is more fun when you run into other real people. I mean, there was a time a couple weeks ago as we were prepping for E3, and our matchmaking servers went down in the whole studio, and all of a sudden, people weren't showing up in your world anymore, and everybody kind of groaned at their desk. They went, oh, no, it feels like, feels like it every other shooter like what happened and then we got the servers back up and running and it felt like destiny again and so it really is a pretty special a special thing when all those things come together yeah and enhancing that through design elements like public events is something that you guys are focusing on uh, very much talk about that we saw that during the demonstration it was something really cool how often is that going to be in the game and what are you saying about those right now sure so we have uh, lots of places in the world that you can visit, places like Old Russia that we showed in the demo. And we just showed a really small part of what that place is. But throughout Old Russia and other places, you'll transition from zones that are marked as private and zones that are marked as public. And this will be messaged in the HUDs. So you can really tell, oh, okay, cool, I'm in a place where other people could show up, or no, I'm in a place that I'm just gonna experience by myself or with people on my fire team. So as you journey around the world, you'll come into these pockets of the world where something like a public event could happen or other activities that we're not talking about yet, but activities that are fun to share with other people. And you can see in the demo that when the big monster dropped out of the sky, it just attracted other players, some higher level guys, some people that were off on their vehicles doing their own thing. But those public events are just meant to smash people together for a short amount of time, have some fun, get some special loot, and then you know go back and do what you were doing before. So. Awesome. Now, the game actually looked really, really good. We saw some fantastic lighting in the game, but the character designs and the overall art direction for the game, you guys started with a blank canvas, so it's really yeah. interesting to know that you could have landed on anything. When sure. did you know that you nailed it, and how would you describe the uh, aesthetic approach to Destiny? Absolutely. So what we really wanted to capture was this idea of a abandoned Earth, this wild frontier. We talk about the last safe city where all the Guardians hang out, but beyond that is this wilderness. Stuff's been overcome by nature. There are now you know, monsters that have occupied all our old, old planets. So as a character, we wanted you to feel a little bit like an adventurer in a frontier. I mean, you can sort of see influences of westerns, you know, guys with cool looking ponchos and capes, weathered gear. I mean, these are real you know, walkers of the wilderness, guys that journey out beyond the walls, beyond the safe area, into the wild, and come back with scars and, and cool stuff that they found. So as you're going out in the world, you're picking through the remains of this lost human civilization and sort of cobbling together what you're wearing and the weapons you find. 
but you're sort of digging it out of the sand and digging it all out of the ruins. So the art style is really one of collecting these pieces of a lost history and putting together your character that sort of represents that old, those olden times that are that are now disappeared. So yeah. it's a fun frontier feel, which I think feels really good. And customization obviously is going to be a key part of that and making the character feel yep. like it's your own. Yep. Um, talk a little bit about though the fact that this game is distinctly different than obviously Halo, but you guys, you know, the, the game that you're most well known for, how important was it to have something that's different? Uh, but did you want to make something that felt remotely familiar or did you just want to be different with Destiny when compared to Halo? Well, we love sci-fi. I mean, we love fantasy, too. So what we've tried to do is smash those two genres together a little bit in something we're calling mythic science fiction. So absolutely, guys are wearing armor. You know, they're carrying guns. I mean, it's pretty easy to squint and see you know, what a bungee game is. I mean, that's what we, those are things we enjoy. Mm -hmm. But we really did want to make it feel really different. I mean, one of the big things in this game is just choice in choosing whether you want to be a man or a woman, which is something we've done before in Reach, but what class do you want to be? Do you want to be a robot? Do you want to be an alien? How do you want to look? I mean, all those things, the choices are just bigger and much broader than they've ever been before. Um, and that goes not just how you look, but also the activities that you choose to play in the game. Do you want to play something that's more story-driven? Do you want to play something that's highly competitive multiplayer? We definitely have those two sides of the spectrum for you. But unlike the Halo games or other shooters, we have a bunch of other activities in between that we aren't talking about yet, but ways to sort of take those players who like playing story or like playing competitive multiplayer and just draw those two groups together, kind of in the public event. Um, just things that'll tempt you to try other things. We really want to slope the floor into other activities that you, that you might enjoy, even if you don't play them very often. And, and this is a, a long-term big time deal for you guys yep. and you're investing a lot into this and obviously we're heading into the next console generation so talk a little bit about you know some of the the ways you want to make the, this genre and this game feel next generation with the technology uh, how, for instance cloud gaming how how does uh, what you can do with the, the upcoming cloud infrastructure going to impact uh, the experience in destiny sure the one big thing that we wanted to make sure happened since we're going to be on 360 you know uh, the new Xbox ps3 and the new PlayStation the design experience across all platforms is the same. So number of AI, the way the public events work, no matter what platform you're playing on, you're gonna get the same fun experience. Now, clearly with the new consoles, we're gonna up the graphics, more leaves on the trees, higher fidelity, all those things. But the core of the game is the same, no matter what platform you play it on. That was really super important to us. Um, right now, all of our stuff is being simulated on your box, so we're not relying on on the cloud to you know run anything. I mean, all our AI physics, that's all right there on your system, which is really important for an action game, for a sandbox action game. You know, we really wanted that same quick, responsive feel. Um, and we'll have other stuff to talk about with new technology in the months ahead, but we really wanted to make sure the game played and felt right on, on every platform we're on. Yeah. Okay, and lastly, just um, where is the game at in development right now? Did you guys, you guys have a release date, correct? And, yep. and let us know all the information about it and when you're going to start revealing some more of this information that you're teasing during the interview. Yes, so we said 2014, and I now that we're through E3, thank God, oh my yeah. God, took the wrapper off. I mean, you know the next number of months are just going to be this like cadence of, of information. So we're going to start talking about a lot more stuff now that we've shown the core right. of what the game is. We haven't set a special okay. spe specific release date yet, but 2014, yep. Uh, the game's up and running on all platforms. Uh, it's awesome to see. Um, and that's just going to keep getting better and more performant as the, as the months go by. But yeah, there'll be Stay tuned, there will be a lot more in the months ahead, for sure. All right, man, well, we appreciate your time, as always. And for the very latest on Destiny and all your favorite video games, you can head online to GameTrailers.com.